guys, I'm Melissa. I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome back to my channel. I feel like I said that out of order. Here on my channel, we talk about all things food and nutrition and intuitive eating and all that fun stuff. So if you are into that, make sure you're subscribed. Today, we're talking about how intuitive eating can change your life. I was recently talking to my husband about this and he's very like analytical. He loves the numbers. He wants proof of success for all of these things. And he was saying to me like, for him, something like weight on a scale gives him a lot better idea of success and something like intuitive eating is so like vague and abstract to him. And how can he actually tell if what he's doing is working, if he's improving anything? And like, how can he measure progress? How can anyone, I guess, measure progress in day-to-day -day life when it comes to intuitive eating. So it got me thinking, what are the outcomes that we wanna see in intuitive eating? What are the outcomes and differences that you would notice in your everyday life as you become an intuitive eater? Especially when you're not looking at numbers or like specific you know, smart goals or something like that for us dietitians who are so used to making smart goals. So I've come up with a couple ways that I think you can measure progress with intuitive eating. And I think that you will see changes in your daily life as you become an intuitive eater. The first one is that food will no longer control your life. And I feel like I say this sometimes and it sounds super dramatic, but it's so true when you are dieting or entrenched in diet culture in any way, food really does control your life, you know? When you're restricting anything, you are always thinking about food. You're thinking of what you can have for your next meal. What restaurant can I go to that allows me to eat what I'm supposed to eat? What times can I eat? I'm hungry, but I can't eat. <laughs> like I'm hungry, but I've used up all my calories. It's just always on your mind. You're always thinking about it. And that's a totally natural response to restriction. And when you become an intuitive eater, it makes it so that you're thinking about food while you're eating or while you're cooking or like at five o'clock when you're trying to decide what you want for dinner at six o'clock. It's not a distraction. It's not a constant thing that's on your mind. It's not a worry or a concern because you're never getting overly hungry. You're not restricting anything. You're not setting rules around what and when and how much you can eat. Restriction is the number one cause for preoccupation with food. And when you get rid of that, you're no longer preoccupied with food and food is no longer taking up all of your brain space and all of your time. The next is, oh, goodbye sun. The next is social events. When you are an intuitive eater, you can go to social events without the stress and anxiety of if and what food will be there. I've heard so many people either A, just not go to social events because they're worried about the food that will be there and sticking with their diet while there's all this off limits food there, or B, just like totally binging at those social events because they're around all this food that they don't normally allow themselves to have. So they naturally have that kind of scarcity last supper mentality of, oh, it's here. Oh, I ate one. Okay, now I'm gonna eat all of it and I'll get back on track tomorrow. Those are the two major things that I hear when it comes to social events. And they both make social events so much more stressful than they would normally be. And this goes for traveling too, which hurts my heart so much because I love to travel so much and I wish everyone could find that joy in travel but unfortunately people who i see that are like entrenched i keep saying entrenched people who i see who are really engulfed in diet culture they have this amazing trip or vacation planned but their number one worry is how are they going to stick with their diet while they're away and that's so heartbreaking to me because it's again just like controlling your life you know it's taking the joy out of this thing that should be so joyful. But when you're not restricting, when you have food freedom, when you're connected to your body, all of those things go away. All of that stress and anxiety around food in these like novel situations goes away. Of course that takes time, but 
this is a major change that you will see when you do find that food freedom because it takes away that out of control feeling. It's okay if you go to a party and there's pizza or cookies or chips or whatever that off limits food is to you because you know that you can have some pizza and you can have a cookie and there's nothing to feel guilty about or you know you can have those things but you know how to pay attention to when you're full and when it's no longer actually enjoyable to you and you know when you're satisfied and therefore you're not going to feel out of control. The third thing is coping with your emotions without food. I feel like this is such a big difference when it comes to daily life and maybe not like daily life. I know some people are super stressed every single day and they end up emotional eating or stress eating every single day and that's okay. It's gonna take some time to find new habits that work for you. It's gonna take new, it's gonna take some time to find new coping strategies. But when you are no longer doing that, it's such a huge difference because the problem is that emotional eating and stress eating doesn't actually solve the problems. You know, when you're eating emotionally, it's often a form of stuffing down those emotions, repressing those emotions, um, feeling like you're treating yourself after a really stressful day, which you deserve, you deserve to be treated, but you're then binging or eating past the point of fullness and you then are still stressed, you're still emotional, you don't feel good because you were not connected to your body and also you feel really guilty now because you maybe ate these things that were off limits for your diet. So not only are you not actually coping with that emotion and not actually dealing with that emotion or stress, but you're piling more stress on top of it. And when you are becoming an intuitive eater and you're finding new ways to cope with those emotions and to cope with that stress and to treat yourself and all of those things, not only are you dealing with those emotions that are coming up that you want to cope with, but you're not piling on those other negative emotions as well. And that's honestly such a huge weight off your shoulders when you can make that transition. And that is a huge change to daily life because it not only helps you cope, it helps you avoid adding guilt and other negative emotions. And it also makes you feel like you're really like working on yourself because you're actually coping with that stress and you're actually digging down to figure out where those emotions are coming from and not repressing them. So those are just three ways, three ways that I think intuitive eating can change your everyday life. Those are three things that you will notice in daily life, daily situations that change when you have become an intuitive eater. And there's so many more, honestly. So if you want me to make a part two of this video, then definitely let me know. And let me know down below if you are in the process of becoming an intuitive eater, if you are an intuitive eater, how did your life change since you have been eating intuitively? Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can get my new ebook, Five Steps to Food Freedom, in the link below. And also apply to work with me one-on-one -on -one if you need some extra support in your intuitive eating journey. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.